Hello everyone and welcome to another show of ECTV. Today we will be interviewing four extraordinary people who all share a passion for the game of basketball. Now we will be joining Ryan Schultz in the studio who has the opportunity to speak to a former professional basketball player and current coach of the Cal Lutheran women's basketball team, Callie Bennett. Hello, I'm Ryan Schultz and today Callie Bennett is joining me in the studio. Callie is the coach for the California Lutheran University basketball team and she started out right here at Ventura High School. Today we are talking about what it is like having a profession in the basketball industry and the rise of female sports. Thank you for joining us. How's it going? That's good. Uh, so I was wondering, when did you first decide that you wanted to get involved with basketball and how did it help your education? Uh, I started at a very young age. Um, I was very tall my whole life so I was kind of pushed into it and I started in the VIBA and then eventually uh, got to high school and then uh, Ventura High and played uh, some club basketball which is really tied into collegiate sports. That's where you get the most um, views and recruitment and so uh, I was really young and got recruited because I was so tall so I kind of knew I needed to have good grades to get to college because that was my goal. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, I, it was a priority so I made, ba made it a focus and then it carried over into college and then um, a little bit more, but yeah, it was always required for me to play basketball. I had to get good grades, so yeah. it was good motivation. Yeah. Uh, how did you balance education and athletics as a high schooler, and then also once you got into college? I would say for me, high school was easier because it wasn't that big of a load. Um, but in college, it definitely um, so much of your time is taken up in basketball. You know, it's all scheduled, and so. What you end up doing is scheduling a time for studying. So mm -hmm. I practice from two to five, and then I had study hall from five to seven. And uh, so I had two hours every day at least that I was required and had to sit down and study. And um, also, I, I would say most coaches, but my coach was very adamant about good, good, getting good grades. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely worked hard at it, and I wanted to get my degree, and I wanted to have decent grades. So again, it was motivation for me. And, Having that required time, especially when your schedule is so blocked out already, I think that was um, that's key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In the midst of doing so much basketball stuff at school, when did you decide that you wanted to carry that over in your career? Um, well, I wanted. I, I as a young kid, I I thought, yeah, I want to be a professional athlete. And then when the time came, when I was a senior in college, and it was all happening, I was like, oh, maybe maybe I'm not good enough. You know, I don't know. And then come the springtime and my coach pulls me into her office and hands me three letters from agents who want to represent me to play basketball and so um, I went to this combine not nearly the level of the NBA but mm -hmm. to a combine and an agent met me and signed me and um, yeah so then at that point it was it was a reality and mm -hmm. then I played I played professionally for about two and a half to three years mm -hmm. and then that's when I decided to make the shift to coaching um, my body hurt a lot and so I was kind of wanted to put that down and I was good with giving up basketball but it was still it was still there and so I got a job opportunity when I came home um, and uh, the head coach Lindsay Goldblatt at Cal Lutheran interviewed me and mm -hmm. I told her I would love the opportunity and I ended up getting a job and I'm in my third season now. Wow. Yeah. Besides basketball what did you do for fun? Um, I was, I've always written poetry, so I'm into poetry is just, and reading, it's been big in my life, but mm -hmm. when I was in college, someone introduced me to um, slam poetry, and so um, I had always watched like the Def Jam poetry on TV and stuff, and it was cool, and I had always written poetry, but I didn't know I was writing slam poetry mm -hmm. until I was introduced to that, so in college I got introduced to that, and uh, I've been performing and writing poetry basically since college so about eight years now. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah that's that's probably the biggest other aspect of my life. You were talking about making that leap from you know becoming uh, a coach after being a basketball player. How did your perspective on basketball as a game change after you became a coach? Oh man um, at first it, it didn't seem like it was going to be that big of a difference because um, at the end of my playing when I was playing overseas on a much unregulated um, not as strict as college um, athletics, but I started realizing how much of, a, of your mental strength um, played a part in your success. So, mm -hmm. you know, then I even looked back in hindsight, like, why did I get good grades? Because I made my mind up that I wanted to get good grades. And so the same thing kind of trickled over into sports when, you know, 
when you make your mind up and you change your mental state to something, you, you generally are, it's better, it's easier for you to achieve success. Mm -hmm. And so I think then that transferred over to coaching and I realized how important it was that I wanted to portray that to my athletes is like, you guys, yes, you're working hard and all this, you're doing this right, you know, this is how you correct your shot. But for me, it was realizing how important the mental game is. And so I talk to my players a lot one on one in the middle of practice and I want to ask them why and why do you think that and mm -hmm. change their mind on something and it'll make the whole experience better. So I think to me that was the that's been the most critical is that physical is very important, but mm -hmm. mental is the difference. So, yeah, yeah. Well, having the opportunity to be a coach and a player, what is your what's your opinion on the difference between male and female athletics in general? And how do you kind of see female athletics? rising in the future? I'd say the difference, my opinion, is, is ego. I think um, male sports, uh, male athletes, a tendency to be driven more towards praise, you know, there's more glory in it. Mm -hmm. Whereas women's athletics, there's not too much glory, too much praise. There's, you know, you can play in the WNBA, but there's only, I think, 122 women total who play in the WNBA. So there's not a lot of glory in basketball for women's sports. Mm -hmm. um, we play because we love the game and that's what we want to do. And so I think men's style is definitely a little more flashy and you know they're driven a little bit more by ego where uh, girls just want to play the game. And so it's a little more true to that. And then I think within that though, in the last couple of years um, with women's sports rising, I think Title IX was huge for that, mm -hmm. um, equaling out scholarships. Now there's money invested into women's athletics so they can be more competitive and they can be more driven. Um, but we're 50 years behind, you know, <laughs> like women's sports started 50 years later and, yeah. um, you know, equalities we just reached within the last decade or, or century or so. So um, I think we're about 50 years behind, but I think we're making good leaps and I think it's just got to keep kind of keep going that way. Yeah. Um, I think girls just got to keep playing to love for the love of the game. And mm -hmm. um, sometimes monetary success happens. You know, I got played to play basketball, so that was, that was a really cool opportunity. Right. What advice would you have for both uh, male and females that are students maybe in you know, middle school or high school that want to become professional athletes or professional basketball players? I would say uh, it's like that one step at a time. So if you're in middle school and you're playing high school, you know, make a plan. What's going to take to get there? I want to make the high school team. What are you going to have to do to make the high school team? Then if you go on the high school team, I want to be in college. So now you know you have to get good grades. You have to practice probably a little longer than your team's practice. You might have to come back later or come in earlier. Um, you know, then apply to schools. There's steps. So if you really want to do it, <clears throat> make a plan and, and achieve it. And then once you're in college, you want to be a professional athlete. There's more resources there. Talk to your coaches. Um, talk to alumni. Um, everyone is there to look out for you, really. So mm -hmm. make a plan. Um, contact agents. Um, things like that. So each step, so you know, if, if you're young, just start with the first step, right? When you achieve that, go to the next one. You know, I, I thought at a young age I wanted to play professional basketball, but when I got closer, I didn't really know it was achievable until I took the step. So That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for joining us, Callie. It has been an honor and a privilege speaking to you at the athletic industry. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan and Callie. Now let's head to the studio with Taylor Thomas, who will be interviewing our very own Isaiah Duncan. Hi, my name is Taylor, and today I'm in the studio with Isaiah Duncan. He is an El Camino High School student who plays on the Buena High School basketball team. How are you today? I'm good. How about you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. So, Isaiah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I grew up in Ventura. I was born in Oxnard. I actually grew up in Oxnard for a little bit, but most of my life I've been in Ventura. And um, I would say that I like to be a leader a lot, so I tr that's why one of the many reasons I play basketball. How long have you been playing basketball? Since I was five or six. I started really young and kind of got serious recently, about eighth grade is when I started taking it seriously. What do you want us to know about you and basketball? Uh, basketball, I want people to know that it's not a sport where you can just come in do it right away. It, you gotta put that hard work and mental have that mentality that there's always someone out there that's just as good as you, but they're working harder. So you've got that responsibility to work harder and make sure that you're the best and getting uh, tips from other players and people that are better than you. 
even though sometimes it doesn't seem like the best thing to do. So what's your favorite part about basketball? I would say my favorite part about basketball is just all the fans. I like um, them. They're encouraging. And um, especially when we have the rivalry games with Ventura. Yeah, um, those are always fun. It's really, really exciting. And it keeps me in that mood to keep playing basketball. So what position do you play? I play center. That's more like a big man. I'm over there getting rebounds and um, making sure that my team's doing what they're supposed to do. They say point guard is the leader, but I would say that for me it's the big men because I'm on a sophomore team, but it's mainly freshmen. So I have that chance to be a leader like I've always wanted to be. So I'm taking that really seriously and trying to make sure that my team's the best that we can be. What do you think you bring to playing center? Uh, hard work, teamwork, and like just that mentality that you are the best and that's how you got to think yeah. if you want to do the best. How has sports affected your education? Uh, it has affected my education a lot. Um, it's mostly negative but sometimes positive. And um, by negative I mean sometimes I miss homework or I get a bad score on the test because I was halfway asleep during class because yeah. of all the practices we had that were early. But um, I've also had life lessons that I've learned, such as like a responsibility and how you got to keep it. So if I have to remember all these plays on the court, then I, I'm supposed to remember when I'm older that I have responsibilities, such as like a family to take care of or bills to pay, that I got to make sure I'm doing this so that they get paid or that my family gets taken care of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite part about school? Like, What's your favorite subject? Uh, I would say math. I want to go into some sort of business thing, so I'm trying to get a degree in some business aspect. What interests you about business? Uh, entrepreneur. Um, I would like to be like a, the leader of my, my um, I would say, company. I want to be the boss. Of, I want to be my boss, and I want to make sure that other people know that I'm not just going to be this bossy messed up person I'm gonna try to make sure that you guys are you guys know that I care for you guys too it's not just a company where I'm here to make money I'm trying to be that leader nice mm -hmm. so do you do anything for fun besides basketball uh, yeah I play a lot of video games um, I go to church every Sunday without God I wouldn't be where I am right now and um, I also play um, s other sports such as tennis, golf, and then I do magic, like card tricks. <laughs> you do like card tricks? Do this. Yeah. What brought you onto cards? Um, I would say one day we lost a game on um, basketball, and I was sitting on the couch mad and thinking about it and what I could have done better. And my uncle came and tried to cheer me up and said, like, Isaiah, you want to see a magic trick? So. He showed me a magic trick, and I was actually interested. I, I at first, I was like, this isn't going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it turned out being pretty cool. So I was, I was like, yo, can you get me a deck of cards so I could start practicing myself? Can you show <clears throat> us anything? Or? Yeah, I have a, actually some cards right here, so I can show you guys a trick. OK, let me shuffle these. OK. Go ahead and pick a card. Go ahead and show it to the camera. Go ahead and set it on top. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to get your card lost. And shuffle it. And then cut it a couple more times. Get it mixed up really good and shuffle it one last time. Okay. Now, I'm just so you believe me, I'm gonna start taking it and going like this. Just shuffling cards face up and face down so that it gets really mixed up. And put your, or this card on the top. And now as you can see, some cards are like that and some cards are like that. So now they're mixed up face up and face down and then we have the middle Okay, now with the snap of my fingers, all the cards come back to normal, except for your card.
Is this your card? Yeah. Here, you want to show the camera? That's really cool. Thanks. You're welcome. So thank you, Isaiah, for joining us and providing your insight on how it is to be a high school basketball player. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Good luck, Isaiah. I'm sure with your ambition and hard work, you will have a bright future. Now we will be joining Gabe Lucido in the studio with the Ventura College basketball team player and student, Nathaniel Claxton. Hello, I'm Gabe Lucido, and you're watching ECTV. Today, Nathaniel Claxton is joining me in the studio. He's a basketball player for Ventura College that's here to talk about the culture of college basketball and how he balances athletics and education. So Nathaniel, first question I have is, are you originally from Ventura? Uh, no, I'm from Modesto, California. Modesto, yeah. I see. And how do, you, how do you like it living away from home? It's, it's different, mm -hmm. especially the, the Southern California life. Like from back home, we don't have the beach. We don't have this kind of sun, you know, the weather again. It's really different, you know. And, you know, how did you feel about, how did you feel growing up in the valley? You know, I noticed you have a Valley Boy shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, these are the shirts that I, uh, I make. And, um, you know, it's, it's rough, you know, because it's, it's the part of a city where, you know, not a lot happens. Um, and how long have you been attending Ventura College? Uh, this is my second year. And have you decided to take up surfing in all that time being oh. here? <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I'll never go out there, man. No. And how long have you been playing basketball? Uh, since I was four. Oh, wow. Yeah, since I was four. So I started young. And how did you get involved with the VC basketball team? Um, my father, he played basketball here in, uh, when they won a state championship, 95-96. And his teammate, um, uh, Hakeem Ward, became uh, assistant coach. So, you know, that's how, you know, we bump heads and, you know, became part of this family. Right, and so I imagine with such close family friendship, you have some strong family support? Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot, you know. You know, without them, I wouldn't, you know, have been this far, made it this far. So that's a big part. And what would you say it's like being part of a team? Specifically, what do you think are some of the advantages and disadvantages? It's hard, it's difficult, but, you know, it's fun. It's also fun. The, the advantages are I'm, I'm gaining brothers, a lot of brothers. You know, we, we all come from different areas and different places and, you know, it's different personalities. So, you know, we're all here for one goal and one goal only, you know, to better our life. So that's how we all, you know, get connected. And the disadvantages are, you know, the college life, you know, living far away. And so you would say that your teammates often help you overcome a lot of these problems? Yeah, definitely. A lot. And how has being part of the team affected your education and college experience? In a, in a great way, actually, because, you know, our coaches, you know, emphasize what's really important, which is school. So if we're messing up, you know, he puts us in a situation to to better ourselves. What would you say is your favorite part of playing basketball? My favorite part of playing basketball is when I first put on my shoes knowing, you know, I'm stepping on the court. You know, it's, it's a good feeling, you know, and, you know, all the stress and, you know, thinking about this and that, it just goes away. That's Perfect. the best part. Do you have any favorite memories having played basketball for so long? Yeah, in my freshman year, high school, um, actually there's two. I think about it, it's two. It was um, my freshman year, travel ball. I got my first dunk, and it was in some heavy Adidas, Adidas shoes. You know, <laughs> it was crazy, you know. And then uh, it was a homecoming game uh, my sophomore year of high school, and I was on varsity. And, um, you know, I, I got a fast break dunk and slammed it with two hands, and the crowd just went crazy. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> so what do you plan on doing after you graduate from Ventura College in regards to basketball and your education? Um, go to the best uh, university that suits me well, you know, um, for my basketball and my education. What do you plan on majoring in? Architect, you know, because uh, I like, you know, drawing. I love cutting hair, you know, it's just something about it. It's just fun, you know, it's what I love. So I was like, you might as well be a designer, ar architect. 
right. know, something like now, that. Architecture requires quite a bit of math yeah, as well. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. Math isn't, you know, my you know, best, but, you know, I love the process. So, All right. yeah, embrace the struggle of math. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Nathaniel, for joining us and giving us an insight into what it takes to be a college basketball player. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for having me. Of course. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe and Nathaniel, for that amazing look at the college basketball experience. Now we are jumping back to the studio with Ryan, accompanied by Ventura High School student and basketball player, Eddie Bakula. Hi, my name is Ryan Schultz, and I'm here with Eddie Bakula, a JV player for the Ventura High basketball team. We're here to talk to him about his unceasing obsession for the great sport of basketball. Hello, Eddie. Hey, Ryan. So anyone who knows you knows that you are an amazing basketball player. Tell me a little bit about when you first decided to become a basketball player and how you've been involved with it since then? Uh, well, I officially like started playing basketball when I was in third grade. I have wanted to be a professional and all that. I always used to go to my dad's practice. He was the Ventura High School uh, JV girls basketball coach. So I'm used to just going to his practices every day, shooting around and messing around with everybody and all that. Then I like started doing VRBA, then I started like loving basketball. I started watching the NBA more. Now I'm on the Ventura High School basketball team. I was on the sophomore team this year, and then a lot of our players got moved up or they got injured, so then I got moved up to mm -hmm. JV. And now our season's one week away from being over, so. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you think has changed about your character since you started playing basketball? When I surf first started playing club, mm -hmm. I would always get pushed or I would get elbowed or I would get trash talk to. My coach now, I remember him having him as a club coach in seventh and eighth grade for the Ventura Gold. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, just laugh it off. Mm -hmm. Now he, now I just like, when people push me or talk trash, I just laugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you'd say it's, it's made you a better teammate? Yeah. That's good. Uh, well, you know, you play for the JV team at Ventura High. Uh, I was wondering, do you think it's hard to play basketball while in high school? And how do you balance athletics and education? Uh, well, it's pretty hard right now. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm struggling in uh, classes right now because I heard sophomore and, ju and junior year is probably the hardest years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, like half the day would be basketball and then half the day would be ed like learning and education and all that. Mm -hmm. And then this finals week, finals week, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, mm -hmm. but I had to stay up until 2.30 a.m. finishing an essay and studying for one of my finals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was worth it because like I aced the final, aced the essay, and I aced the other final too. Right. So. That's awesome. So undoubtedly, playing basketball in high school is very hard, but how do you plan to continue playing after high school? I want to play at Ventura College, just like because I remember there's a player, James Ennis, he played at Ventura, he's now an NBA player. Mm. He played at Ventura College for two years and it played for Long Beach State wow. for uh, two more years and now he's drafted in the NBA. Mm -hmm. He's really good now. Mm -hmm. I would like to be like James Ennis and all that. Yeah. Well, playing basketball professionally is incredibly in uh, competitive, as I'm sure you know. So what do you think sets you apart from the rest of the aspiring basketball players? And what's giving you that, that competitive edge to become a, a professional? Well, first, um, my dad's a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. He coaches the JV girls mm -hmm. basketball team. But now because, the, now because the freshman coach for the boys is now the assistant varsity coach, my dad is now coaching the freshman boys team mm -hmm. for Ventura. So, he helps me all the time with my shots or my mental game and all that. And now, like, I just learn from him all the time. He's like, he's my coach mm -hmm. slash my dad. Mm -hmm. And he's a math teacher at Ventura High School, so I get help from that, too. That's awesome. Eddie, thanks so much for joining us. I've watched you as a basketball player for a really long time, and after talking to you today, it seems that you are on the right path to becoming a professional. Thanks. Thanks, Art. That's all for this episode of BCTV. See you next time.